Well, thank you all for coming. Just a brief introduction of who I am. Uh, marine geologist and geophysicist for Offshore Survey Company. Uh, so that a group or marine surveys in Lafayette, Louisiana. My degree and main love in life is geology. So uh, right now I basically do all oversee all of our geophysical processing and kind of QCL acquisition uh, for our offshore work. I've worked on a number of projects now. I've been offshore for a bunch. Um, I keep my own little running tabs. I've got like 16,500 line miles I've done so far. Um, I have a limited experience with multi-beam and hydrography, but my experience so far has been really interesting. It's such a fascinating field, all the technology, um, the surveying aspect of it is really, really fun for me, and uh, very grateful to have been invited to speak today. <clears throat> now, the uh, the surveys that we ran, why do we do it? Well, I just updated this, and now it's already out of date because we had Hurricane Sandy again. But the importance of uh, these surveys for the needs of the client. Hurricane knocked over structures. They need to salvage. Where's the debris? Where where are things going? They need to see underwater. And uh, they tried a couple other methods to see underwater that were substantially more expensive, uh, like divers, ROVs, and, and things of that nature that cost them, you know, half a million or a million dollars to, to do. Help them work, work with them, create a plan, how to get, get the debris, maybe move, uh, move the rig on location, what's down there. You know, if you don't know what's there, um, it might take you a little more time in the field. Uh, saves, we saved some, definitely sa saved those guys a lot of time, field days, when they saw, and uh, of course, insurance. Everybody likes insurance just to know what's there first. Now, the basic of how do they see? Well, you know, I said, well, we can just throw a Mesotech in the water and look and see what's there. So this is a, a bottom scanning sonar image of a platform and the, the, the surface picture of a lift boat at a at a platform. So, you know, just basically just seeing what's under there, what what's there. But of course, obviously, you don't have very accurate positioning on all these things. You don't have any kind of a Z reference. It's just a just a picture. Um, but you could do a number of drops, and we've, we've done that before in the past, and uh, created a mosaic from uh, Mesotech data to see the debris down there. And yet again, it's really pretty looking, but it's just a picture. There's no Z. You don't know how high these things are sticking off bottom. You got all these shadows, and it's uh, it's not a cumulative data. It's you know you're finding the best image at a time and kind of compiling it together. You know you could run the side scan sonar, uh, but then you've got gear in the water. There's, there's things sticking up. You could snag that. Um, so basically, oh, you know you've got the basics of underwater acoustics, and I don't need to go to this slide because everybody knows all those information, but um, dolphins, how they communicate, underwater acoustics. I usually give this talk to a lot more engineers and project managers to give them a background, but uh, actually on this one, it was really cool. We, we uh, had to stop work from uh, too many dolphins under the sonar, completely obscured all the data. So uh, we, we took an awesome looking video of these these dolphins swimming underneath, uh, but unfortunately, the recording rate is a one frame per second recording rate, so it didn't it didn't look quite the same. But you could you could watch these dolphins swim right under the head of the sonar and catch fish. I don't know if it really translates well to to this video, um, but it looked awesome. And as uh, Juan had mentioned just a little while ago, with the uh, the effluent of water and the effect that has on it, uh, and you can see in this image on a side scan just just how the big of effect that tide can have on uh, on your velocities and and your data alone. The uh, we're comparing, you know, an old single beam su study of say a, a can hole from a jackup rig where they had set up on location, and you can't really know the accurate bottom unless you you pass directly over it, and you can't really ensure that. So therein lies why we needed uh, multi beam. And so with a single beam survey, like this is off the coast of Aruba, um, you can create a really nice looking bathymetry model, but uh, how reliable is it for any kind of objects? So then that moved us to what we actually did with the uh, vessel mounted multi beam system. So we were passing multiple passes over platforms, get multiple reflections, get rid of as much acoustic shadow as we could. Um, we, we used HiPack and a POS MV on this project. Um, along with multiple um, CTDs, 
and the Resan 7125. We also had that coupled with uh, an RTN uh, for positioning. So our real-time um, positioning had uh, very, very good accuracies and centi you know, 20, two centimeters or so. Uh, so you're seeing platforms, schools of fish, um, all kind of data in real time. And so then on, on these artificial reefs, we were really seeing um, a lot of information. The, these platforms sitting there with the seafloor and schools and schools of fish swimming all around it, kind of verifying that they are an excellent habitat for fish as if because uh, there are some people that were questioning how how well they actually work for um, a sustainable habitat. And so then it, what's really neat to, to put two different types of data side by side on the same exact object. So this is a platform that was knocked down in Hurricane um, Katrina, I believe. Uh, so you can see the top deck, crane, you can see the wells, um, and these are the... Uh, these are actually the can holes from the uh, rig that came in to do the decommissioning of the well to actually uh, detonate cut down below the mud line. So you can actually see, actually when I showed this to the manager, he got really nervous because he said, whoa, it would have been nice to have this information ahead of time because you can see they got within about a foot of that and you wouldn't want to step your, uh, your rig on top of uh, one of those that would mess up the spud cans. So... Um, these, these canned holes are about 10 feet deep. You've also got really faint patterns from lift boat pads that are about a foot deep. And then we were actually able to measure the depth of this below the um, mud line to be uh, 15 feet deep, confirming that they had the depth that they needed to have. So they had a lot of information out of this um, single survey that took about a half a day to do, as opposed to some kind of an ROV with divers that took two weeks and you know $300,000. Um, so they're really happy with that. And then you compare it next to a side scan sonar image of the same platform. And of course, you've got all kinds of acoustic shadow and, and things that are blocking your image. Um, in this, this same scene, I actually took a, a rendered a drilling rig in 3D and put it in the scene in Fleeter Mouse to kind of give a real perspective of, of size and uh, placement. But the, the data quality, like this real time, I mean, the processing was really limited as far as it wasn't like days were spent on processing data. It was hours to, uh, to basically ultimately uh, create an image like this. So it really was amazing to go from acquisition to some kind of a, a final product in a very, very short time frame. Um, here's another example of that. Uh, depending on where you go with, this, with the side scan, you get all kind of problems, whereas with the multi-beam system, you're on top of it, your data is cumulative. The more passes you have, the more information you have. And you're able to see all kind of debris they didn't even know was there. Um, you can see where that platform had broken off and the top deck is laying upside down on the seafloor, seeing uh, lots of pipe and debris. And, uh, and some of those dark spots are the, uh, the can holes from the jack-up rigs that were probably there from a long time ago. This is deeper offshore. Um, some of these have been about... 180 feet deep. Um, so, and then we also passed over an artificial reef. And if you look right here, you can actually see the uh, the cathodic protection devices installed on those uh, legs on the on the on the uh, platform. And uh, this is in 180 feet of water. And actually, it was a test run between. I decided to to run a couple of these between a couple of our actual work sites. It seemed like a great opportunity to just run it and get data uh, because these are pristine platforms that were cut and laid gently there as opposed to, you know, knocked over by a bulldozer or a hurricane. So these were really, uh, really fun to do uh, and, and see with very limited passes, really. I mean, you're not talking about spending five, even five or six hours. I mean, a couple hours of data collection and, and you're uh, able to produce these types of images. And for a lot of people on those artificial reefs, they cared about orientation, height off bottom, and uh, that kind of information. The resun was definitely able to give within a, a single pass, really. But the more passes you give, obviously, the uh, the more information you have, the more acoustic shadow you get rid of. Um, so then, uh, you know, I played around with this image to, uh, to kind of show. I, I like to show this to people with like drilling companies why they need to do multi-beam surveys. Um, 
because you can have a high resolution sleep seafloor image and know exactly where you are. Uh, so ultimately the client was extremely happy with what we gave them because they, they saved a lot of field time. They saved, uh, and that was the other problem. Uh, I don't know how many people prepare um, multi-beam final products for clients that don't know exactly know what they want, but they didn't. They say, well, I don't know what I want. It, so I, I ended up giving them, you know, video files and, and seeing all kind of information that they didn't even know they, they was possible to see, much less that they wanted to see, but they sure wanted it after I, I started um, giving it to them. Uh, ultimately, you know, some of these, these uh, operations cost $80,000, $100,000 a day, so if you can save them six hours of field time, if you can save them a day of field time on a bigger project, you save them a heck of a lot of money. Um, and then the data was very accurate, the, the precision of the Resan instrument, uh, coupled with uh, you know inertial navigation and uh, RTN provided very reliable information and uh, a lot less time. So that's a, that's pretty much all I have. And I uh, want to give a, a special thanks to uh, Burr, Bridge, and Mike Brissett, who were a big help to us on this project. Um, gave a lot of uh, good advice. And uh, thank you.